Welcome back to My Early 2000s. I'm your host, Will. And I'm your other host, Daniel. And this is the show where we explore the loved and lost movies of the early 2000s. A bi-weekly challenge we created to rekindle the passion those films gave us and the spark that brought us to the industry in the first place. And just like every episode, we like to start with a liquid, preferably beer. So yes, Daniel got us a beer today. I did. I got us... Uh, an Easy Up Pale, California the Pale Colorado Ale. Colorado Brewing Company. Coronado. The Coronado Brewing Company. <laughs> Home of not the Rockies, the beaches. Oh, we went to Coronado, right? We did, for a wedding. And that's the only time we'll ever go there again, because that is where the real rich people go. Yes, it they is. They have their own island, I hear. They share it with the Navy. I don't know, man. Let's give it a try. Yeah. It's been hot, so. I know, it might feel nice. I kind of want this. If you're somewhere else in the U.S., we feel bad for you. Yeah, I like that a lot. Ooh, that's tasty. Yeah, it's really, really light. Really it's light. really just like barely there, but mm-hmm. there's something in that aftertaste that's really yeah. nice. Yeah, it's like a nice, uh, it's like a very light IPA. Yeah, I could see myself enjoying this on the beach, actually. Yeah. like on IPA the, on the beach. On Coronado, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you this summer. How are you this week, Daniel? How have things been? doing all right. How yeah? are you? Yeah. You know, it's been it's been good. We just watched the State of the Union and... I just threw up in my mouth a lot of times, but that's fine. That's fine. And we're here to talk about movies because that's what we do best is we talk about movies and things that we love. Movies and things that we love. And so what beer. movie were we watching this week, Daniel? We watched the a famed classic that no one has ever heard of called Music and Lyrics. Um, I got I to gotta just be honest here. My buddy Rob at work, he knew we were watching Love Actually a few months ago and he was like, oh. If you like Love Actually, uh-huh. you're going to love music and lyrics. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is music and lyrics? This movie did not even kind of come on my radar back mm-hmm. then. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I watched it with you. Yes. Because you happen to own it already. I do own it. You yeah. own the movie already. I didn't know it existed. Yeah. Wow. Just I wow. I know. It's been here this whole time. How long have you owned it? Uh, when did Blockbuster go out of business? <laughs> <laughs> Like 2009, 2010, I think. There you go. Wow, like a decade of that film in yeah, your collection. I had it. I haven't seen it in, a, in many, yeah, many yeah, years. Yeah. I don't know that I ever even watched that. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like a loved, beloved film of yours. It no. was just like, Blockbuster's going out. I'll grab that one. Yeah, I just have a lot of those kind of movies from that era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that, that era, I really loved a lot of movies that that I wouldn't love today maybe, you know? Maybe. There was a lot of there's a lot of that on my movie shelf. Sure. <laughs> I feel like that's most people's DVD collection. It's like, oh shit. Yeah. That's what I used to like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> good. But we did watch this movie and I enjoyed it. Yeah. I weirdly enjoyed it. Good. Me too. Yeah. It's completely unnecessary, but in some ways it's totally necessary. Totally. I don't know. What what did you think about this film rewatching it? It was so much fun. It's really light and uh, and it made me feel happy. You know, like it gave me that little dopamine rush and that was great. You know, it did exactly what it set out to do in my mind. Yeah. And um, it was a lot of fun and really just really a sweet movie. Why did this film not get recognized by anybody when it happens to be like one of the most fun of the genre? This is not my genre. I'm not an expert uh-huh. in this whatsoever. But I would argue that this is kind of the most entertaining. Totally, yeah. It di- it it is it is kind of at that pinnacle of the rom com spectacular that is the early two thousand. Like they've got it down to a fucking T yes, by now. It's a very scientifically, you know. But it's almost like in this film, not scientific. It's not it's not too scientific. I guess there's some there's some elements of like real fun here. Yes, absolutely. And it's very um, it's lighthearted, and it, it almost seems like the romance takes a takes a sidestep. To we'll, the, we'll get there for sure. I yeah, think. yeah. Well, that no, one, but I'm that di- I I didn't need the romance personally because no, it feels I like yeah. friends. Yes, working together. Yeah, but if they have to do the romance story, mm. what I will argue for this film that most romantic comedies do not is it really took its time to develop these characters together. Yes, I didn't see the romance coming. Yes, it's out of left field, and I don't believe they have any chemistry. Mm -hmm. But they took the time that was necessary to develop that relationship. It's just that these actors didn't have chemistry, I think. Yeah. I think that's what it turns out to be. But it wasn't reckless with the love. Like, people don't just fall in love because they fall in love as much, I think, in this genre. With with a lot of these films, I feel like, you know, like, like... 
a lot of those rom-coms from the early 2000s, if we say like, okay, that couple's a real couple and where are they at today, which is 10 years later, yeah. the, the music and lyrics couple, the Hugh Grant and Drew Barrymore couple, not together. Yes. They never even got married. No. They dated for a couple months and then it was awkward and they business partners maybe still. It, it took lasted, the length of the film. It lasted film. less than the film. Yeah, yeah exactly. <sighs> it's, a, it's a tricky question because we don't see the film like this. Today. Yeah. Like we just don't get those um, the most that's that's the first thing I noticed is when I watched this film and digested it, it was like, I haven't seen a film like this in 10 years. Yeah, they, they don't come out. And it out really much. does feel, I don't know if it's dated or it's just we don't do that anymore. Yeah. Well, I think, I, I think we do it, but we do it a little, we do it differently and we do it more so on television. The, no one's as confident as they are in this yes, film, though. There's, no. there's a, a level of confidence with these characters that no one has today. Yes, I agree. Because it's almost as if they're in on it that everything's going to work out. Which is, is yeah. very... That's kind of that style that, that, that takes place with those kind of movies where it's almost like Disney. You know, you, you know it's all going to work out. They're still struggling, but it's not like they're re- there's no real pain. You know? Yeah. There's no real mm. like evidence that things couldn't go wrong yeah because all the things that do go wrong in this film i kind of don't remember once the romantic element is introduced into the film i kind of forget what's happening maybe we should get into the synopsis though because we're kind of blowing over everything let's before we do that yes let's talk about uh what what this kind of movie felt like back then Uh, okay I, i think this type of movie yeah this type of movie this time Let's kind of get into that zone. You know, I think at that time, I avoided films like this. Not yeah. because they were out to make me feel happy, but because that sort of happiness I just wasn't looking for at that time. It felt fake to me. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that other people can't benefit from that kind of storytelling. Yeah. Just because I don't digest happiness that way. And now, looking at a film like this that was totally off my radar mm-hmm. for a decade almost... It kind of makes me regret not watching more of those films mm. 10 years ago a little bit. Yeah. Because, yes, they're fleeting. They aren't, like, truly honest. No. Yeah, exactly. But there is, there's something honest about this one in yeah. some ways. Yes. There is, there is honesty in it. And there's, there's a lot of it. They, these movies, and especially this one, they play on our hopes. They play on our fantasies. They play on our dreams. I, I don't know why I used to really hate that shit. And still a part of me does hate that shit too because hopes, get your hopes up. Like uh-huh. I want things to work out because I earned them, not because they just happened. Because yeah. So it's a weird thing for me to understand. But when you put that aside and just let Hugh Grant do his fucking shit yeah. and stutter away yeah. into a great punchline, mm-hmm. makes me question a lot, Daniel. It makes me question a lot. <laughs> The way Hugh Grant stutters just frustrates the fuck out of me. And then he just like per- turns it around every fucking joke. Mm-hmm. He makes it work. He yeah. uses it as a tool. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. You just discovered Hugh Grant, which is just so beautiful to me. To Maybe see that's that. no, because I've been watching this fucking guy for since I was a kid, but I just didn't care. Yeah, but but like when you it's like when you saw Love Actually, you saw Hugh Grant for the first time. Maybe you were like, oh, maybe this is why most people in America love this man. I don't think most people. <laughs> I think <laughs> most people kind of like Hugh Grant. Maybe, but there's also something about him that just like pissed you off. Uh-huh. But maybe I just discovered him. I don't kind know. of at the top of his game. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I know for me, uh, in this came this movie came out in two thousand seven, and for me at that time I loved rom coms. I really did. I was I was pretty young, and I was very much a dreamer, idealistic, romantic type of person. Uh, I think I was always like that as a kid, and these movies just played on those those fantasies in my mind. Maybe to a fault, you know, yeah, eventually yeah. in my early 20s being like, well, that's not real. And Did you sort of get a letdown of what things would be like because of films like this? Possible. Yeah. It's, it's definitely possible. I think that it de- it kind of gives you that that false reality that that like, oh, if, if I have a difficult conversation with with uh, with my girlfriend or a woman, you know, then and and i go home sad she's gonna chase after me or i'm supposed to chase after her you know like it gives you that like false sense of reality 
Yeah, not that's that, probably why high school relationships, they're such a disaster. They're a disaster. You know, because no one knows what they're doing. They're just like kind of faking some scenes they saw. Yeah, everyone's just pretty much, yeah, exactly. You're kind of just acting out the movies that you've seen. Yeah. And maybe your parents or some other relationships in your life that are close, but you're not seeing the intimate details. You're seeing the intimate details on screen. Most and I think of the that's time, why I was reading it. That's why I kind of strayed away because I knew it wasn't real life. Yeah. But knowing that and coming back into it, knowing that it's not real life and just going in to see something, mm-hmm. that's the attitude you should be watching a film like this with. Yeah. I think for me, I just, it, I knew it wasn't real life, obviously, uh, but. I wanted but, it. Yeah, exactly. To be there's real life. some part of you that wanted it to be real life. Yeah. And there's no part of me that wanted it to be real life because I just knew better, I think. Mm. Now, knowing that it's not going to happen, but living in that reality for a second and just having fun, mm-hmm. that's what gives you hope. Not, not things should be exactly like this movie, but use this movie as a reason to make yourself happier and the people around you happier. Interesting. That's that's what I got from it. I looked at this film as a popcorn movie that wanted to make fun of people that make fun of pop music and say that it's worthless and has nothing of value. Mm-hmm. That's why they went with this style of film. Like it's all of those things. They're doubling down on this style in this very positive way, and it's saying, "Yeah, you're not in on our joke, and we're having a fucking blast yes, without exactly. you." And you know what? There is nothing wrong. With watching something that makes you happy. No. That's that's just the truth. And whether that's... And th- I think that's why some people watch, like, the Kardashians or whatever, because it makes them happy. Well, that's a different story, I, and I, I could talk about that for a whole I other know, podcast. We're not going to go into that, but but this is one of those... I'm gen- just saying like Hugh guilty- Grant's more important than Kim Kardashian. I agree with you, <laughs> 100%. This movie is a guilty pleasure movie. Absolutely. And it does it well. Absolutely. So... With that being said, maybe we should get into a little bit of synopsis just telling what the, what this movie's about. If you haven't seen it or if it's been a long time since you have, um, this movie's about a, a retired pop star from the 80s. Kind of like retired. the Wham band. Yeah, you know, like Wham. George Michael and all that. And this is like what it's like if we saw the story of the other George Michael, yeah. that other guy that we don't know his fucking right, name. Right, the one who didn't go off and have a solo career that was successful. Right. So he's living in, uh, kind of living in the past. He's playing a bunch of high school reunions. This is Hugh Grant's character, by the way. He kind of has a career, but it's like, yeah. it's like mall gigs. Yes, he's playing like amusement parks. And yeah. He's, you know, he's still doing music, and and uh, but he's fulfilled with that. Yeah. At this point in the film, that character's fulfilled with all that. So basically what happens is, uh, there is a famous pop star uh, who who loves his music from the past and wants him to come and write a song. And he ends up finding a lyricist in in an unsuspecting victim, essentially, who is Drew Barrymore in this movie. She's just his his like substitute plant cleaner for his house. She can write. She writes lyrics. They write together. There's she a little love write. story. She just sort of like humbly mumbles some lyrics. Yeah. As he's in the middle of a... Can you imagine... Being somebody that's been hired to water the plants while a famous pop star works on his music, and you're just like la 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 la, right. la I in know. the fucking background. Yeah, it was a little weird. There was some weird. There was some weirdness in there. Uh, no, because she always she does this a lot, and she's great at it. it. Yeah, it's this like, it's this choice of a character that's not stupid. It's more like the Einstein effect, where I'm so smart and I'm so focused on everything. That I have no idea what's going on, and that's why I'm watering the floor right, right. now instead of your plant. Yeah, I'm just doing what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. she's definitely, um, and she even calls herself hy- hy- hypochondriacal. Like she's a she's very Not a word. she's very neurotic. <laughs> yeah, um, I knew because I was like, that's a word I've never heard before. <laughs> that's why I remembered it. Um, anyway, this movie uh, is directed and written by Mark Lawrence. He wrote Two Weeks Notice and directed that Miss Congeniality one and two. He didn't direct those, but he wrote them. So that's kind of like this Hugh People Grant Sander love. Bullock thing is his style. Yeah. Um, it stars Hugh Grant, Drew Barrymore, Brad Garrett, Kristen Johnson, Haley Bennett, and Matthew Morrison and. Um, yeah, a bunch of great people. It's a really nice little cast they have there. And because it's about music, there's uh the the composer will say is Adam Schles Schles oh my god. Adam Schlesinger. Does he write the like fake pop songs I think in the so. song? Okay. Yeah, I think he writes everything. So, um pop and he also like works goes on my heart. Pop, pop goes, goes my heart. heart. That <laughs> great song. Great song. Well, let's not say things we can't take back, <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> 
There's some great, catchy songs in there. Great. Yeah. Catchy. <laughs> catchy. Um, so yeah, yeah. So basically, he's been hired for this Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears esque sort of pop star, which is so the times. The big pop star that doesn't write her own music. We get this washed up old real musician to come and write for him. Mm -hmm. He needs this gig. Yeah. He needs it so, so bad because he feels like maybe it'll finally validate him as an artist. He can finally write the one song that they remember him for that's not pop goes my fucking heart. Right. So there's, there's wonderful redemption here. I love this character. I love the whole story. And... We, we we talked about it a little bit at the top, but I really argue that it kind of is weakened by being a romantic comedy. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it could have just been like a friendship comedy. Yeah. And I, it would have been maybe a little stronger. Like, yes, they do take the time and all those things I said, but yes. there's something about what they're doing that's interesting enough. Yeah, you don't need the romance. What I think they could have gotten away with is them having sex one time. Sure. And it being awkward. Yeah. You know, and it like because they're working so close, they're, you know, whatever, this or that, a good moment happens, and then they have sex, and then they're like, that was kind of dumb. You know? Because once they get together, man, I really don't remember it because it, yeah. it gets really muddy. Yeah, it's just totally unnecessary. I it's of the time, and that was what was necessary for the time to make this movie. How do you feel about their romance? I'm not a fan of it. I no. don't I well, I don't think they have chemistry. They're so fucking good at what they're doing like they're the best at what they do yeah they just happen to be doing it in the same room yeah totally (laughs) they could make it without the romance and i and it would be it would have to be grittier and definitely like he would definitely really need to have this happen because he kind of seems he's content in the movie with where he's at like he he's he's he doesn't argue when they call him a has-been he doesn't look totally defeated or depressed he's kind of like yeah huh you know whatever i do this i like the high school reunions you know, I could I could have more. It'd be nice, but if not, I just don't want to lose this at least. Yeah. And it, I think you know today you would definitely need he would need this thing with Cora, with the pop star. He would need this thing you know to happen and puts him at a, a way a deeper spot. That that's a way more interesting story for today. I Alternative think. to this is that he's going to be on the '80s has been reality like boxing, boxing show, show or something yeah. like that and. He's just trying to not cross that threshold of true has been. I don't know why, but there is something about that time. We really threw old stars to the curb. Yeah. I I think they did a perfect job at capturing all of this like nuance and and the joke of the wham band and the George Michael has beens. But Mm -hmm. who was this fucking joke for? Because I don't. I didn't know who Wham was at the time this movie came out. I only kind of know about it now, yeah. you know, but it really wasn't my childhood. It wasn't anyone that was a little bit older than us. Yeah. Like they couldn't re- like, who was the joke for? I kind of think it's for people who at that time were in their forties and fifties. Is that who this film is for? You know, what's funny is I was Did we ta- get tricked into watching an old people movie. I think so. I was talking to my dad today and he was like, what? I was telling him we were recording the podcast. He's like, well, oh, what movie are you doing? And I was like, music and lyrics. He was like, oh, I love that movie. God damn it. God <laughs> fucking damn it. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, maybe it was for them. I enjoyed it. I still enjoy it. I enjoy it a little less now. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's also a musician professionally. So a movie about music is definitely going to, you know. Does he like his School interest. of Rock? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Who doesn't like School of Rock? Terrorists. One thing that I think that this movie uh, kind of doesn't do particularly well mm-hmm. is the meet cute, which in a romantic comedy, there's always the meet cute, yeah, which is the moment when the two lovers meet, and uh, usually it's very cute or absurd. <laughs> you know, there would be like if if you're watching, can you, can you name an example of like some cute ones for you? <laughs> I can't think of a movie, but I'll give you an example of what yes. would work. So if I'm if a girl's walking across the street and she almost gets hit by a car, and then the the driver of the car gets out, and those two are the ones who fall in love later, that's a meet cute. It's adorable how I almost murdered you that one time <laughs> exactly. with my car. <laughs> exactly. Or like 
you know, if you uh, if if I'm trying to throw trash in a trash can, but I throw it on you, I don't know why I would do that. But on accident, I miss the is trash can. Is this all datingness? Is you just fuck up? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a mistake, or a or if like just even in its simplest form, two strangers are walking, they round a corner, and they they physically run into each other. Yeah, that's a meet cute. So right? could you say what this meet? Cute yeah, so is? this meet cute is uh, j- basically she just comes to his house to water his plants, and she's subbing for her. Because she's friend. been hired, yeah. No, she's oh, she's, she's subbing. A su- That's she's a right. Sub. She's not even actually been hired. She's no. just like, hey, I'm here. Yeah, it's a happenstance. I'm gonna happen to like bother you in the middle of Water your music your plants, meeting. Which I mean, I'm sure that's a rich people job in New York City, especially. But but why does she have that contact to like be the backup watering plant I lady? I do not know. That's never really said. She just is there, and then. Uh, so basically what's happening is is um, Alex uh, is with his manager in his apartment chatting about uh, gigs they have coming up, whatever. And she comes to clean the plants and he's like, oh, you're not Susan or whatever. She's like, no, Susan didn't tell you she's out of town, whatever. I'm well, He kind of like gives a vibe of, hey, you're pretty cute. I don't really know what you are, but you're here and I kind of think you're cute that's what i got out of he's that he's more scene. like and i i didn't even find that them to have attraction to each other i thought that they were just like they didn't they, he did okay i didn't see, even see that i thought he was more he's like playing that you're for interesting sure. you know i i didn't see it i did i i mean maybe he was playing it i just was like oh he was he's in he's intrigued by her a little mm-hmm. bit you know she thinks she's kind of hilarious and, and yeah weird um i didn't see a sexual attraction to me but uh, not so. No, you're right. You know, it right. wasn't yeah, like yeah, yeah. that moment, that spark, that mm-hmm. where the chimes happen. We're gonna fall in love. Pop goes my heart. No, they that didn't happen. It just didn't pop. And then she weirdly like, like pricks her finger and then leaves randomly. And you know, so, as you do, as you do. It's just really awkward, and I I don't know. I don't like that scene. I didn't like that scene, and I, I don't I don't think that that scene was. I think that scene, as far as setup goes for their romance, just didn't do it. Straight up, I do not remember the third act of this film. Like, it's just forgettable. Yeah, it's just them going, it's just them, like, breaking up, essentially, because uh, she wants to do the song her way, and he's fine listening to Cora or whatever, and then then they go to the concert, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not horribly, I, I think the concert is really what makes the third act. And there's a nice little resolve, obviously. I just wish they had maybe hired some better actors that were better singers. Yeah. Since since it is such like it's it's weird, I think, because the film like has to it has in it, you almost pulled back from the music element to give them more scene work and things to watch instead of making it about what I kind of wanted the film to be about. Mm -hmm. You gave this premise, and I kind of wanted to really see that. We got a little bit of it. A little bit, yeah. You know, there's that scene where they're like recording the demo together, and it kind of seems like no one knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, a little bit. You know, like he even goes on take two, and then he hits it, and it's like, right. oh, that's that's a mistake in the film for sure. Yeah, he, that's no one's m- recording. Who who's that take two for, man? Right, and also <laughs> no one says take two before they record. And take two, right? It's like no, that's a film thing. That's not, and and also it's not on the recording it's not <laughs> on the recording because you started the recording after you said take two what's the take two <laughs> that's so funny i didn't realize that oh my god <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> Inconsistencies. And, and, and that's and that's just probably like he's in the scene and he's doing the thing and he probably just did it in the wrong order that's fine yeah that's whatever. totally forgivable totally but it, but it made me laugh. Yeah, but also it shouldn't have even been in the script because take two is just unnecessary. Take that one out next time. It would be pretty easy to pick apart this film. I think well, with any film you could do that, but I think it would be easy to, to kind of... I mean, it's a popcorn film. Yeah, it's it's popcorn like trying film. to rate yeah. the Transformers movies. There's just you, really... You can't do it. There's it's, no point. It's eye candy. Yeah, exa- exactly. I think the only thing that my critique about the meat cute, that's a good critique because yeah. that, that is a, an element the of the love. genre shouldn't have even been part of this film <laughs> that's just a big discussion to have yeah like, it's a big discussion but uh, i not to get on a whole other tangent but i kind of think there could have been a lot more comedy in this movie interesting it, yeah the the way they do comedy is not like what so subtle it is but he's great he what is he's, great what he's doing it's charming is, yeah it's charming and there's a little laugh here and there and then 
I she's love Drew Barrymore's fantastic. sister in the film. And yeah. Brad Garrett has has like two jokes in there too that made me laugh out loud. It's not like there was not nothing, but I feel like if we were to do that movie today, you'd get like eight or ten stars from TV to be in this movie. And they did get Brad Garrett and they got her. They're both they're both TV I, people. Yeah, I think if you do this film today, it's almost it's like a bunch like, of has been coming a together. A bunch of people. Yeah. It, or like up and comers. Yeah. Cause I just watched what did I just watch over the weekend? I just watched Funny People, that Judd Apatel film. I love the first hour and twenty minutes of that yeah, film. It was I really enjoyed it. But everyone in there became a star about two years later. I mean they they got lost in the shuffle back then. Yeah. They totally did. Because it was just one after another. But after but another. it did make a lot of money though. Yeah, it did made it made good money. It made like 152 mil worldwide, which is kind of insane. Or uh, yeah, for 145 like mil world worldwide, and it made 50 mil in the states alone. It made a lot of money. I mean, not a, an absurd amount, but definitely um, for a 40 million dollar budget, it was a, a success. I it's that they use people who are severe up and comers in the industry in movies like I Love You, Man, and Funny People, which the reason I'm bringing those up because I recently watched them. And um, and this movie just uses people, it seems like. You know, either people who are names or just people. So you think that this actually was a miscast film because it didn't think about what these characters needed? It only cast based on people and what names brought in? Yeah, I just well. That's yes. definitely that time though. Yeah, you know, a Drew Barrymore in a in a romantic com. Like, think about it, man. She made Fifty First Dates work. Yeah, she made Adam Sandler a romantic comedy. Right. Yeah, and then she made fucking Fever Pitch. Mm-hmm. I made Fallon a funny, charming man. Right. Yeah. Clearly, they're gonna just like give her the one. Yeah. Off, you know, it, like it, it, she's it, a shoe in. She's gonna make this movie work. Right. And it's definitely it's not it's not a severe comedy. I I think they could have upped it. That's that was the yeah, point yeah, I was yeah. trying to make because I feel like they could have upped the comedy by twenty percent by getting a few better uh, people, more that comedic that. people. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, and because that's what I, that's why I was referencing those other movies because they use comedic people to fill those small roles even. Yeah, which brings us kind of life to them even if there's not jokes. So with that, let's get into our questions like we do Absolutely. every week. Absolutely. What was your favorite line or moment in this film? My favorite moment was um, actually during the the song uh, that that Hugh Grant sings on the stage. Yeah, the first one for yeah. her that he wrote for her. I, it's a fine song, whatever. But there's a moment where um, they put the the camera on different people in the audience, like her sister and um, somebody else in the audience. I think the uh, the other lyricist, a few people in the audience who were there, and like I literally felt the release of dopamine from my brain to my body, <laughs> like just her. I, it was so weird. What I the fuck does like that mean? immediately got happy. Yeah, it made me happy to see their faces. What like understand? <laughs> I don't know. It's something so beautiful about this genre where they'll do shit like that. Where mm. where it's it literally just warms your heart. And I just my heart got warmed. God, I'm judging you so much. I know, but that was that was my favorite. But good moment. for you because I actually that. felt it in my body. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, you know that was mine. So what was yours? Um, I loved. What's the pop star's character name again? The, which one? The the oh Cora Riley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cora Riley, I think. Yeah, the pop star that wants him to write a song for her. Mm-hmm. I love, love, love that scene where they finally they've been spending the whole film writing the song for her. Just slaving over it, Drew Barrymore singing on a track for the demo, and she's not a singer. All this tension, and it's just like, uh, can you please just like listen to this song? And she's like, yeah, I'm gonna listen to it right here at the airport in front of you. I'm putting my headphones on. I'm not saying a fucking thing to yeah. you. It's silent and it's so awkward. Uh-huh. And she's like, yeah, we can, we can <laughs> listen to it now. I guess sure. Right. Better. <laughs> I but love it's, like it's just so wonderful. They I, have to stand there in that moment. And it's so funny when he when he when Hugh Grant goes, so uh, how about Debbie uh, Debbie what's her name Debbie that old pop star Debbie something? How about how about Debbie something on Battle of the Eighties has been? You know, yeah, like yeah. he references that he's been watching the TV yeah, show, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and they just kind of like smile at him, like, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> I love that they kind of bring that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just love that they have to stand there. In mm-hmm. that, I think it's a little easier of a scene mm-hmm. 
than maybe it needed to be. Like, it's just like, yep, you've got the job. Right. <laughs> but, but there is something great about those 15, 20 seconds of silence just standing on an airport. You hear her fucking plane start to spin up behind her. Right. She takes the headphones off and she's just like, yep, this is the song and leaves. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I love it. Cool. Well, that brings us into, um, did you like the soundtrack at all? Of course I like the soundtrack. Okay. <laughs> this is a movie about music and they did a nice job with it. Pop goes my heart. That's a great song. Yeah, it's definitely in my heart forever. I don't remember the the great song though. The one like, they wrote. Ma, na, ma, na, ma, ma, ma. Like it's the, it's they write this song for her, but there's something about it that's like not memorable for mm, me. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember it. I like I like everything, but I don't remember it. Do, 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 I know the melody. Do. I don't know what it stands for, what oh. that song means. What way it, it way back is. into love. But yeah, but yeah, I know what you mean. It's yeah. not a super memorable song. Uh, I love the song he plays for her. I don't I think remember it's such that either. A nice song. I don't rem. It's it's uh, about um. Like I know it's about how he never does this and he never writes for himself yeah. and all those things and it's the most vulnerable thing he can think of to do. Yes. In two thousand seven. Right. <laughs> it's basically the standing with a boombox over your head moment. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's. I don't remember what what the hook of that song is, but it doesn't matter. It's just a nice little chord prog- progression. Who does the Oscar go to? Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Yeah. He's charming as shit in this movie. And I don't know. He just, he, he's just good. He's just yeah. good in it. I just but like why? him. why? What is he doing in this film that's any different than any other fucking film? I, I mean, first of all, there's not like a ton of great performances in this movie. <laughs> that's so, the thing is like, they're just kind of like hanging out and playing it's themselves. So whatever. I didn't. Yeah. I, I would rather give it to Hugh Grant than to Drew. Because not because Drew any, did anything wrong at all. Uh, it's just that I didn't like the way her character was written. So the, some of the choices that she had to make just didn't feel real because they weren't real. I just had to go with which character I liked better and who played it. No, absolutely. Yeah. And so Hugh, Hugh. we'll be sending that in the mail to you from Daniel. All the I, way in London. I, on the other hand, for the first time ever, am giving an Oscar to no one. Whoa. Sad to face. no one. Wow. Because no one's... Like you said, yeah, everyone's just kind of like mediocre here. And as much as I really do have a good time watching this film, no one stands out to me. I agree. No one stands out. I get it. I, I totally get it. First time here. You know what? To just you, have a snub. If you ran you the imagine Oscars. imagine the next Oscars <laughs> is just like, and the Oscar goes to? Not a fucking one of you. Goodbye. They're, good they're, night. Apparently there were zero votes. That'd be better than the Moonlight La La Land thing last year. Yeah, that, that was, was awful. Uh, that was very embarrassing for them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear there's no cell phones in the Oscars this year now? Really? No cell phones. Wow. So just, I'm never going to get another Ellen selfie. And that makes me sad. It is sad. Poor rich people. So. As they say. Ellen's out of a job. But if we could get a job to somebody, it would be The Rock. Who would you put him as in Good. this film? Good. Nice transition. The Rock. Okay. Go with me on this. And I'm not trying to put anyone out of a job here. <laughs> I would like to see The Rock play Drew Barrymore's part in this movie. It doesn't have to be a gay thing. It could be. I don't know. doesn't matter. The Rock and Hugh Grant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Think about it. They're both charming mm-hmm. in different ways. What and the, the rock, rock is the lyricist, like genius. The Rock's the okay. lyricist because he's got this like heart of gold mm-hmm. thing, but he's got yeah, this yeah, like yeah. tough guy exterior. Of course. And he waters plants like literally. <laughs> come on. He waters plants. Come on. And he works at the fitness place. It makes sense. Okay. She doesn't work at the fitness place. No, you're right. I'm just saying. Who would, would you put you, him as? Oh. Would you think this film would have the level of comedy you were looking for if The Rock played everyone in this <laughs> film? <laughs> oh, you're talking about uh, going full Medea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could work. It really the could Rock work. Try to teach himself how to write music. <laughs> I really want to see The Rock thrust his hips like like Alex does. No, you're right. 
You're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Uh, so, which character would survive longest in a zombie apocalypse? I think Hugh Grant, just because somehow he has survived all of this. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he almost he's, is a zombie. You know, yeah, like he he's been riding that line of has been and not this whole time, and somehow he's always stayed afloat. Yeah, and I think that's just part of him. No matter what, no matter what, like when everything started to fall apart at the end for him, he was like, okay, no, I guess I have to be even more vulnerable. I have to do even more things because I can't have it not work out. Mm -hmm. That's just in his being. It's in that character. Yeah, totally. His character's, his character's name's Alex. Uh, Alex. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that until right now. I kind of forgot. Alex something. I don't know. Alex wham. Pop goes goes my heart. heart. Pop goes my heart. All right. Which character for you, bud? For me, the sister. She has some fire up in her. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I kind of like that. I, where is she in films today? Her name is Kristen Johnston. Yeah, she's so fucking strong in this. Like, any time that you're like, where's the comedy? And she pops in through a fucking door like the Kool-Aid man, and she's like, here it is. Yeah, no, totally. She's uh, she's definitely got it. brings a lot of that. Yeah. Mostly doing TV, it looks like. She did The Exes. She was a regular on that for four seasons. Oh, interesting. She's been on Modern Family, Ugly yeah. Betty, a bunch of shows. And she was Ivana Hump a lot in Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently. Holy shit. The more you know, Da-da-da. the more you grow. So what was your favorite My Early 2000s moment in this film? My Early 2000s moment in this film is the genre itself just the way the film feels oh interesting yeah Yeah, yeah. i I don't usually go that broad yeah but this movie it's just so uh they only existed not rom-coms in general rom-coms existed in even in the 80s but the way this the way this one these are like a cookie cutter one that comes in that that like 2009 to 2009 yeah yeah yeah, exactly that 10 year span Especially more towards the, the later came end. The Polly's, the Fifty First Dates, all yeah, those movies. Totally, yeah, yeah. and even the bad ones that I can, you know, like Fool's Gold or uh, I don't even know, but other ones, Fever Pitch. Probably. What the fuck is Fool's Gold? It's with um, what's her face? Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey. Is that what that movie's called? I thought that was a video game. No, they have more it looks than like one a video game. There's it, more than one of those movies? Uh, there's How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, because they do that one. That one's pretty good. Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the one where he's standing, and it's like a plane and a sunset behind him. That's that one. Yeah, not the one recent. Yeah, like, but yeah, I think so. Fool's Gold. I don't remember anything about it. I know I saw it. Fool's Gold. Fool's Gold, starring Matthew McConaughey. Remember when he Kate was Hudson. reading rom-coms? That, um, what was your... Okay. <laughs> I was just waiting, man. I was just waiting. <laughs> So, uh, what was your my early 2000s moment? You know, the thing that really, really stuck out to me are the reality TV show 80s has been sort of, like, I don't know why, but it feels so specific for that time. Totally. The I love the 80s, the celebrity real house, the celebrity rehab, like all those reality shows that happen to be all about 80s and 70s stars. I, I don't know what that show would be today if the movie was made today. I don't know that that like game show aspect of like two people that used to be creative artists having to do something so demeaning and stupid like yep. box each other. Right. Yeah. It they're just literally feels so of that. They're time. kind of playing on the idea. They're being uh, satirical about the idea of what was actually happening in pop culture at yeah. that time with has been so to yeah. speak. They were like literally calling it what it was and box adding boxing. It's which is, this weird hunger game sort of attitude towards everything. And yep. we don't really have that today. No, it doesn't seem like it. That's where we're at. So um, how many beers would you give it out of a six pack? How if many... I want to critique the film, I'm going to give it two. Okay. If I want to critique how I felt after, I'm going to give it three and a half. 3.5. Yeah, because you know what? Hell I'm yeah. a little drunk and it feels good to like this movie. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I don't know. It just, regardless of all those problems, I ch- I challenge you to watch this fucking movie and at the end to be like, nah, I feel shittier now. Yeah. 
you're not going to. You're going to feel fucking great mm-hmm. and at least take a great nap. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a great film to watch after a drunk brunch. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Best. That sounds... Why did we do That's it that way? That's the best way to do this movie. <laughs> Go get bottomless mimosas. Come home. Pop in this movie. Take a nap. Boom. Saturday. What about you, bud? Uh, For me, I would... I'm going to agree with you. Three and a half. It is, it is really nice. I enjoy it. Is it the best rom-com? No. Is it close to the... It's barely a rom-com is almost. Is it top 20? No. But no? <laughs> probably not. No. But it's top 25, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so three and a half stars. <laughs> what did you learn from this film? I learned about... Uh, I think I learned a little bit about storytelling in a way that is is lighthearted. Mm-hmm. Like a lighthearted storytelling in in a way that th- where the consequences aren't as real. Um... So I would say there was a there was a certain element of this film that to me it gave me an insight into how how I could write scenes like this or how I could think about scenes like this coming up in the future and going like okay it almost gives you a like a, a little syllabus of what kind of not to do in yeah. a way in like okay well that this is what lighthearted cheese is so if I want that, fine. I can refer to this film or many others. Or I can take this stuff and go like, okay, well, this is these are the guide marks that I need to make a little bit more realistic. So I think that's where, I, where I'm at with it. How about you? I don't know if I learned very much from this film as much as just the industry did in general. Um, as you've said earlier, we kind of don't make this film anymore, and there's maybe a reason why for that. You, you look at a film like this and you can see where some of those those traits really weakened the film. And if they had just told a story that wanted to be a story instead of needing to fit this cookie cutter mold, it could have maybe withstood the test of time a lot better. Mm-hmm. I, I look at this film now as like a, a missed opportunity for a great story. And I think that's something we're trying to do with lightheartedness now. We're trying to give things more weight, not necessarily that they need to be heavier, but they need to have a reason yeah i know what you mean that makes sense i think even even if it is popcorn it should still have some reason behind it it's a great stepping stone it's really a great stepping stone and i'm really happy that i watched it it's super enjoyable if you haven't seen it just do it but before we wrap this thing up we're gonna let daniel cook another thing for us in the my early food Food challenge challenge. what did you make for us this week i made pop Goes my heart corn. What what's in pop goes my heart corn? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it is popcorn with bacon, some uh, garlic, and mm. chives. It smells great in it. Yeah, it's a very savory popcorn. Is dish. it called pop goes my heart because of the bacon? It pops the heart. <laughs> it does a little bit, but also because of the movie and the song. We should have had. Why didn't you make this before we watched the movie? That would have been smart. Next time. Oh, oh my fuck. god. If you guys haven't had popcorn before, hot take. Popcorn's Whoa. great. Yeah, it is. That's pretty tasty. Pop goes my taste buds. Hell yeah. <laughs> Pop goes my taste buds. This is a really good popcorn recipe. Yeah. Did you steal this from somebody or were you just like popcorn butter chives? No, Gotta I look looked up. up some savory popcorn ideas. Yeah. Just to get ideas. Made up what I thought sounded good together with the bacon. Well, it's good together. Thank you. Just like Drew Barrymore. And Hugh Grant. And that's my early 2000s for this week. If you like this show, please subscribe to us in the Apple Podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. And please feel free to leave us a comment or review, which helps us spread the word about this show. And if you'd like to reach out to us, find us on Instagram or Twitter at Splash Zone Media. That's all for us. We'll see you next time on my early 2000s when I'm full of popcorn. Yeah, you are.